Hey guys, Sherry Ann Richardson from experimentalhomesteader.com. Welcome to our daily vlog. And today we're going to be talking about task number 15, uh, 50 survival prepper tasks for beginners. Now, as you know, if you've been listening to the tests that I've been giving, I really hate to use the word beginners uh, because I feel like these tasks are something that everyone needs to check themselves on and um, see where you are. Make sure you've got this particular plan in place. And that goes for all of these. You know, it only takes a few minutes to listen to it and then go over your plan and make sure that you've got something in place just in case you need it. So today is to go over your escape plan with your loved ones. There will be situations where you can't stay in your home. So you need to have a plan for this. Um, you may or may not be near your family when that happens. You know, the kids could be at school, your husband could be at work. Maybe you're out shopping when something happens. You know, whatever the situation, you may not be with your family. So everyone in your family needs to know what to do in the event that they can't stay in their home or return to their current home. Um, you need to have a place to meet up and you need more than one option. Depending of course on the circumstances. Um, but having more than one option and more than one plan in place of how to get to that place is always a good idea. Um, for example, if your city is under attack from a riot or whatever the situation may be, you may not be able to flee to a nearby wilderness where you've got a family survival camp set up because someone may have set the wilderness on fire and your camp may not be there. So you need to have another place that you can meet up just in case. Um, you also need to make sure that everyone knows how to get from point A to point B without going along main roadways. The main roadways could be compromised or they could have people who aren't safe to be around on them. And you wouldn't want your loved ones to get caught up in a bad situation while they were trying to get to the safe place that you had designated for everyone to meet up at. You also need to teach them how to not rely on a cell phone because the cell phone towers could go down and you might not be able to communicate that way. So one way to help you get this plan put into place is my emergency preparedness plan. Now I have made mine into a binder and printed everything out. And this way you can put all the papers in the little plastic sleeves. They can keep nice. You can fill them out um, depending on your answers and your family's answers and you can gauge how prepared are you you know are you very prepared are you sufficiently prepared or maybe you're under prepared these are really really important things for you to get into place and to figure out before some horrible disaster happens you know, we've got a lot of things going on all over the world. There's a lot of unrest going on right now. And you don't want to be caught off guard, especially not right now. So with this uh, emergency preparedness plan that I sell over on shop.experimentalhomesteader.com, you can assess your current situation. Um, like, what are the most likely disasters to happen where you live? Okay, maybe that's a hurricane, maybe that's a tornado, maybe that's a snowstorm. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, a riot or a civil unrest situation. It could just be a natural disaster. And then you can talk about, you know, what are you doing to prepare for this already? Do you have a three-day supply of food stored up? Do you have an emergency kit in your car in case you get stranded someplace in a snowstorm? You know, what do you have already in place? And then there's also a spot for less likely situations 
that you'd like to be prepared for. So let's say you don't really think there's going to be a riot in your area, but never say never. So you want to prepare in case there is a riot in your area. And so, you know, what are you doing to prepare already? And um, how prepared do you consider yourself? There are checklists of some of the most common items for like first aid kits or uh, power outage checklists. And there is space down below for you to write other items. Because like I said, the checklist has the most common items that you may want, but there may be other items that you can think of that you want or need. Um, there is a page for stocking your pantry and your freezer. Right now with the food shortages, you know, having that supply of food on hand is really, really important. Get it before the price goes up, but don't be hoarding. You know, buy <clears throat> an extra item of this or an extra item of that. If you have the buy 10, get one free in your area, do that. Don't hoard food. Food can go bad. It does have an expiration date on it. And it's not going to do you any good if you have 50 cans of the same thing and they all go bad and you need them. So this is why I always say buy a few extra cans or containers of something. Rotate your stock so that you're always using your oldest product first. But you still have, you know, that three month, that six month, even that one year food supply. Just pay attention to the dates on what you buy and buy in moderation. Leave some other stuff on the store shelves for other people. You know, I mean, it's, it's not a race to see who can have the most. If you've been preparing for some time now, then you know, there's, you know, just keep adding to what you have. There's no big emergency. I mean, yes, we do have shortages, but there's still types of food on the shelves to buy so just adjust what you're buying and instead of buying this if they're out of it or they're low buy this you know it, it's not rocket science um there are places for power and fuel supplies there's a checklist of how to prepare your home for both cold and warm weather personal care items you know, getting your vehicle ready, a place to keep track of your medications, a place to make an outdoor survival list. And then of course you wanna plan your food supply. You want to be financially prepared. There's even a 52 week savings plan in here, guys, that may be able to help you save some money. It basically is a dollar a week. So for like week one, you'd put a dollar, week two, you'd put $2. It's not major massive money, but at the end of the year, if you do it every week, it's $1,378 you've saved. So while yes, a little over a thousand dollars doesn't seem like all that much. If you think about it, it is though. It's the start of an emergency fund that you can use for whatever you need it, need it for. And I know after COVID, many, many of us have had our emergency funds and our savings completely depleted. So there's no better time than right now to start trying to build that back up. And it doesn't matter if you keep it cash or you put it in the bank. Cash is always good, um, but you need to do what makes you feel comfortable. You also need to have special plans for the elderly and the disabled and small children if you have those family members in your household because they're gonna take extra things and different things than what a healthy, able-bodied adult, adult is going to need. Your pets, you know, you need to get your go bags ready. You need to have an evacuation plan a list of important documents. Maybe you have, you know, the need to take a home inventory for some reason. I mean, all of this is in here, including a readiness check right here. And it goes by the quarter. 
So you can work on it. And hopefully by the end of the year, your plan is ready to go. And all you've got to do is make sure that the items that you've set aside are kept up to date and are good. So that, my friends, is something that's very important and that I hope that you will take seriously and that I hope that you will think about and create your escape plan with your loved ones. And it doesn't always have to be with the people who live in your household. You know, maybe your, you know, maybe your kids don't live with you anymore, but in the event of an emergency, you would want to meet up with them so that you are working together as a family unit. So take some time, sit down and make this out. If you wanna check out the emergency preparedness plan that I have available for sale, I will leave the link down in the comments below. And again, it is shop.experimentalhomesteader.com. You just go to the shop at the top of the page and you will find it there. And I will also leave down in the comments some links to some other articles over on my blog, experimentalhomesteader.com, that will help you with some planning and help you know what to do because we never know when an emergency is going to happen. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments below, and we'll see you tomorrow with another daily vlog. Thanks for watching.